Today's topic is Victorian Romance. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Victorians weren't exactly known for being passionate lovers, but that does not mean they didn't have their desires. In fact, the buttoned-up representation we often associate with the Victorian era misses the fact that Victorians were pretty creative when it came to inventing ways to get around romantic restraints, especially in the sphere of dating. In the Victorian era, many saw marriage as an economic arrangement from which both families of the bride and groom would benefit, and typically an event known as the season triggered all the upper crust matches that would lead to these arrangements. Families who took part in the event had one goal in mind, to find their daughter a suitor. No matter where they lived, the Victorian elite would send their daughters, in their mid-teens or early twenties, to London for the sake of encountering a potential match. The most important element of the season took place in the coming out, it's not what you might think it is. It's where the young women were presented in front of the king and queen by their mothers, aunts and other female relatives. Even though the actual presentation only lasted a few moments for each girl, the planning would start months, if not years, prior. Once the young woman had come out socially as a debutante, she could then attend parties and social gatherings. She was always accompanied by a female chaperone though, usually her mother, and had to navigate the brave new world of dating whilst under supervision. Imagine your mother staring over your shoulder as you swipe on Tinder. In the Victorian age, men were well aware of the fact that others watched and judged. As a consequence, young Victorians who wanted to get to know one another beyond their respective words and family lineage, devised covert tactics to have conversations without speaking. The woman's hand fan proved to be a useful, inconspicuous tool to do so. Women often carried these fans to avoid fainting in hot ballrooms, which, given the prevalence of corsets and tight gowns, was a more commonplace event than you might think. In any case, women created a fan language in order to communicate with suitors. As it happened, this wasn't much of a devious act, as chaperones appreciated the self-restraint. Many viewed this type of subtle flirtation as acceptable. The fan signals weren't that hard to interpret. If a lady's fan was shut, she didn't like the suitor and wanted him to leave. If the fan was half open, she was friend zoning him. If the fan was wide open, she really liked him, she might flutter it as well. The men did not carry fans, but they did carry some kind of business card, and they would often give them out to women so they could contact them afterwards. Then we come to the Victorian version of emojis, the language of flowers. During the Victorian era, flowers and plants were used to communicate during a time when expected conventions restricted conversations for a variety of reasons. Flowers allowed secret messages to be sent. As the long list of flowers and their meanings grew, books containing the messages of various plants and flowers, known as floriography dictionaries, were published. So here are a few examples of what various flowers meant when sent to the lover. Red roses meant passion and romance. It meant the man was saying, I love you. Daffodils meant unrequited love. The marigold symbolized jealousy. Stop staring at other men. Yellow carnations meant rejection. I don't want to see you anymore. Yellow roses meant friendship or let's just be friends. Now, some flowers were given as a question. The rose meaning I love you could also be responded to as I love you too or I don't. To answer a yes or no to the question, the recipient, the lady usually, could accept the flowers with either her right hand or her left hand. The right hand meant yes I love you too or the left hand meant no go away. This list is endless and I encourage you to look up the language of flowers, it truly is an interesting topic and part of our culture that sadly no longer exists. So there you go, some interesting facts about Victorian romance. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram and the link is in the description. Thank you for watching.